Hello, it's the Crap Goth. My name is Pixie and this video is going to be very, very triggering and it's going to be talking about child death. So if this is not for you, please just turn off. Uh, this is something that I feel I need to do. So it's not going to be a happy-go-lucky video today, but it is going to be real. So this is a spur of the moment video. Um, I've been sat here in my pyjamas all day. I haven't had a shower in nearly two weeks, I don't think. Something like that. Um, I haven't got dressed all day. I have just pretty much sat and cried. I'm two days away from it being the six month mark since my little boy died in my arms on July the 9th, 2023. A day that is ingrained in my head forever. And the reason I'm doing this video is because people see my other videos going out. They see me doing unboxing. They see me messing around with my husband. They see me going for days out with my family. They'll see me doing unboxing on Crack in the Box, which is my son's YouTube channel, Corey. You can see behind me. Um, please go and sub if you've not subbed to that channel. Um, and I get so many comments saying, Corey will be so proud of you. Aren't you doing so well? We're proud of you for getting up and doing it and carrying on with the YouTube channels. And oh my gosh, you're so good and you look really well. And you know something, it's bullshit. It is. This whole thing is bullshit. I am not coping. The reason I carry on is because I wake up in the morning and I'm still breathing. And I've had times when I wish I wouldn't, which probably sounds pathetic, considering how much my little boy fought to stay alive, fought and fought, and this is not what he'd want for me. And I've heard all the cliches, so don't tell me. The one thing that keeps being repeated and I don't know if any of you have got any experience with this with child bereavement. I mean, any bereavement, I guess, but child bereavement is in a whole different level. Like, no one can ever prepare, for, ever prepare you for it. Never. It's the shit that people come out with, with the best intentions in the world. Telling you that it's normal to feel this way. It's normal to not want to shower. It's normal to not want to eat. It's normal to not get dressed and not find any joy in life. It's normal to feel guilty every time you do anything which is gonna make you smile. I'll drive my car, I'll make a video about it, I'll have a laugh with my husband, I'll come home, I'll cry. I'll do box and openings for both my channel and Corey's channel, which was our favorite thing to do together. Like, we love being YouTubers. This was our thing to do. And I love it when I'm in it. And I, I think it's amazing and it's incredible. And I'll come off camera and I'll cry. I got this cushion. I unboxed it last night from a lovely lady called Denise who's in America and I cried and yeah it makes me sad but it touches me that the whole world is just not the whole world obviously but the people who follow our channels are still there but I am not going to sit here and sugarcoat shit about how it gets easier and people have said the first Christmas is the worst. Well, I've had his first birthday because he died just before his birthday. I've had the Christmas now. Is it going to get easier? No. No, it isn't. Was it hard? Yeah, it was hard. It was hard going out shopping and seeing all his favourite foods and presents that I'd buy him. My daughter works in a toy shop. And she hasn't told her co-workers that Corey died because she doesn't want people feeling sorry for her. So she would be stacking the shelves with toys that she knows her brother would like and would get upset and didn't say anything. We all felt his absence Christmas Eve more than most where he would be getting his stocking and going upstairs and being excited. We still put a stocking out for him on his bed. Santa still visited. He still had a Christmas tree in his bedroom and he will every year. People say, 
Corey, Captain Corey, will never be forgotten. And that means a lot. They also say he's forever 11, and I disagree. He turned 12 the year after, sorry, the month after he passed away, he turned 12, and he had a 12 balloon at his graveside. And next year, this year, losing track of the time, he'll become a teenager. He'll be 13. He wouldn't want to be forever 11, he'd want to be a teenager, he'd want to grow up. Does it hurt? The pain, the pain feels like I'm going to die from it. It hurts. It's not getting easier, it's getting harder the longer the, the time goes on. How can it be almost six months, half a year? since I saw him smile and touched him and held him. I don't get it. The world feels like it should stop spinning. This is the worst thing ever to go through. Um, my mum was killed in a horrific accident. I've lost family members to suicide. I've lost my beautiful niece to asthma. I've lost friends to oh, just everything's horrendous losing your child it's a different ball game totally so how do you cope <laughs> you don't I suppose everybody's different some people will be focused and go to work I don't work I'm on disability well PIP personal independence payments for those people who are not in this country, don't want that. I is, I've got severe mental health issues. I don't work. I was Corey's carer. I, he needed me 24 7 towards the end. And I have. Uh, feel as though I have no purpose in life anymore. Now, there'll be people saying that I've got other children, which I do. I've got my girls. Ebony's moved out. She's 20. Ostara is a daddy's girl through and through. And of course, they need me. I'm their mum. But you have to understand that Corey was born with a heart condition that needed surgery from a day old. The amount of times I've handed him over to surgeons and they've told me that he might not make it. The amount of times I've had to sign forms to say that you understand he could die in theatre and I might never get him out. Everybody met Corey when Make-A-Wish and Johnny Depp stepped in and made him into a YouTuber and made him, oh my God, so happy. He was, he had the happiest seven months of his life when he became a YouTuber. And that's down to you guys. I've never seen him so happy. But before he was a YouTuber, he suffered horrendously. Two heart transplants, multiple open heart surgeries, years and years of living in hospital, agonizing tests, fear, scans, needles, everything. You didn't see that, and I've lived through it. And the hard thing is I feel that there's hardly any mental health help out there, not just for Corey, which I'm advocating for at the moment for children, to get more mental health support when they come out of things like this, but the parents, they want to drug you. <laughs> Take some sleeping tablets because you can't sleep because you're having nightmares, so let's pill you up with that. Having panic attacks and depression, medicines, chuck some pills down your neck. It'll make you into a zombie so you won't feel anything. No grief, no fear, no nothing that just zombies you. But that's okay. I understand it's good for some people. I get it. I'm not anti-medicines. I'm anti being sedated and made to feel that I'm not allowed to grieve unless I've got pharmaceuticals ramming stuff down my neck. Six months, nearly, no grief counselling, nothing, no therapy, no nothing, not for me. I wake up every morning and I look in my little boy's bedroom and he's not there. I go to bed, I see the photo above my bed, I say goodnight to him, I can't sleep at night time. I relive his death over and over again, his last breaths in my arms, watching as he took those last breaths with his sister holding his hand 
and John at the end of his bed. Feeling him slip away in my arms. I will never forget that. But I think what people forget is that I have been through this before. This wasn't my only time of losing my child. I've been in hospital beds when they've told me he would survive hours and they've moved machinery over and moved him over and I've got in bed with him. They've drawn the curtains around him and are waiting for him to die, basically. I've been through this over and over and over again for nearly 12 years. Every day for nearly 12 years, wondering if he's going to make it the next day. Is he going to survive? It has fucked me up beyond belief. I am a mess, but I am still fulfilling his last wish. He wanted me to be a YouTuber. He wanted me to carry on this channel, which I think he set up to help me. And I will have fun on it and I will have laughs for him and I will do challenges and dares and do all the stupid, ridiculous shit that he wanted me to do. And believe me, he was a prankster. He was a trickster. He had some stupidly harebrained schemes up his sleeve, even getting me arrested in the middle of town, dressed as a frigging cheerleader, which, by the way, I'm still going to attempt to do. <laughs> And he wanted me to do it. <laughs> His final wish was for me to get my silver play button like he did. And that was my focus. When he died, that was my focus. I had to make this channel work. I had to do it for him. But, you know, it might take me forever. I might never get there. But I'm going to try and I'm going to work my way up and I'm going to still put out videos that are probably going to, you guys are going to think is stupidly and harebrained and stupid and... But there's going to be videos like this that are serious and touching on subjects that are hard to listen to. And I'm not going to be a depressive cow, but I'm not going to pretend everything's OK because it isn't. And right now at this moment, at nearly half past 12 at night, on the 7th of January 2024, I want to be with my little boy. This is not a suicide video probably said a trigger word then I'm sorry this is a honest mum video and I'm not coping I want him back I miss him Corey was my best friend in the world and I love my girls and they understand the bond that I had with Corey it's different some days I wake up I wish I hadn't. Some days I wake up and I'm hyper focused on setting up, setting up his charity, which is we're going to launch this year. Corey's won two BBC awards for bravery, which he knew he was nominated for, but he passed away before he actually the finals happened and he won. So I collected them on behalf of him, for him. I go and talk to him. I kiss his teddy bears, the ones that he wasn't buried with. I cuddle his dressing gown. I kiss his pirate's hat. I open his window in the mornings if it's a nice day. I water his plants for him that people have sent. I pretend that he's still there. And then it hits that he's not. And I feel lonely. I'm scared and I'm 44 how many years have I got left I don't know it's it's a privilege to get old it's a privilege to get older it is having seen how many children are fighting for their lives in hospital needing transplants I know that Corey was lucky to receive the two that he did and we are eternally grateful to those families who helped that to happen but he suffered and I'm wondering how long I have to suffer because that's what it is. It's torture. Corey knew he was going to die. He made a bucket list. We did things together. We did stupid videos on YouTube and stupid dares. I still got to fulfil those, which I'm going to do. In two days time, I get a new puppy. A little chihuahua. I'm a big dog kind of person, not a rat dog kind of person. And this chihuahua has just kind of magically landed in our family from a friend and he's beautiful and he's going to be called Spooky and Corey loved dogs so maybe he's a gift from Corey 
and he'll be on this a lot. I don't even actually know why I made this video, I guess it's just to show you all that this is real life. And you know, grief, grief is not a textbook thing. Grief is not being told by professionals that your child, Ostara, my little girl who's six, cannot have any form of grief counselling for the first six months because you have to go through the natural process to let your body and your head sort itself out for six months. Who the fuck thought up of six months? Oh, six months is a good cut-off point. Half a year, yeah, that was about time to, to, to process it. Do you know something? Ostara is six years old. She grew up her entire life in hospital. She took her first steps on a ward. She saw her brother on life support in the intensive care unit with his chest open, covered in wires and tubes and breathing machines. She saw his body after he died. She was with him for five days. She saw him. She walked in and out of that room at the hospice, seeing her brother after he passed, like it was nothing, because she was so used to seeing him like that. She thought he was going to come home. Recently, she's realised, now that Christmas has been, he isn't. And we're left to deal with that as parents. Where is our grief counselling? Where is our specialised, not just a generic, going to the doctors to talk about how sad you feel and how all this will pass and the stages of grief. I don't want to listen to that shit. I want to talk to people who have actually lost a child and who have lived through it, who have lived through a transplantation process, who have lived from the hospital. I want someone to help my little girl. I'm angry. And I'm sad and I want my child back. I don't see why he had to die. And this is how life is going to be forever till I die. It's hard. I don't know what I'm doing half the time. I don't know when you get up and go. I struggle. I put on a smile for videos. And I do enjoy doing this. I do love being a YouTuber. Even if my subs are falling, I still love it. It gives me a sense of purpose in a way, but then it doesn't feel the same without Corey. He was so happy. He knew he was going to die and all he wanted to do was still help others, still get that message out. <coughs> I'm just here to let you know that it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to not shower, bath, eat, walk, go outside. You don't have to talk to people. You don't have to get fresh air. You don't have to do fuck all if you don't want to do that. You cope how you think is best. And if that's by telling people to piss off and not shove drugs down your neck and by sitting in a group and going, hi, my name is Pixie and my child died. If that's, will you do what you need to do? But do you know what I need to do tonight is curl up in a ball and fucking cry and scream at the world and question why my little boy who was innocent had to suffer and die. So my message to you is this. Don't let anyone tell you how you should be feeling. You do what you need to do. And if grief comes in all different ways, and include you sitting on the floor in a pool of your own piss and tears and snot and so be it. You're not on your own. I don't piss myself by the way but sometimes I can't be bothered to do anything. We're all here for each other and you cope how you feel best. So there endeth the most depressing video probably ever I'm gonna do. Corey's funeral uh, video will be released soon. We had it filmed professionally because the world helped pay for it. That will be released on Crack on the Box soon. We're not quite sure in what format yet because there's copyrighted songs on there so we need to be careful how we do it. And it will only be available for a short amount of time so when the link goes up you best just to like, download it or screenshot it, whatever, screen record, whatever, I don't know. But I do want to say thank you. Thank you to everybody who has supported me, who supported Crack in the Box, who supports Corey still. Thank you for the presents, the cards, the messages. 
Thank you for the never ending support. Thank you for not judging me, and if you do, for doing it quietly, and for not telling me how I should be doing. Right now, right now I would do anything to wrap my arms around my little boy and kiss him. And hear his laugh and be shot up the arse with a Nerf bullet, which is what you do all the time. I want him back. And he's never coming back again. And that is really hard to live with. And I don't know what to do. I'm not opposed to childhood parental grief. I have no clue what I'm doing most of the time anyway. But tonight, right now, I feel like the only person in the world. How crazy is that? Talking to a ring light and a camera on a YouTube channel that has thousands of people watching with a little boy that people know all across the world. And I feel lonely because all I want is him. And none of this is normal. It's not normal to feel like this way. It's not normal to grieve. It's, don't use that word normal. I hate it. I hate it when people say it's normal for you to feel like this. It's not fucking normal. No part of losing a child and having them die in your arms and burying them is normal. No part of it. Doesn't matter how old that child is. None of it is normal. So stop it. For me anyway. Please stop it. But thank you for those who are supportive and who understand that this channel of randomness is just that, random. And I'm a real person with real feelings. And I've just lost my best friend in the entire world and I don't know how to cope with it. So yeah, I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna go and have a really big cry and still not have a shower. For all of you out there who have lost children, my heart goes out to you. For all of the workers who work in hospices, cardiac units, any kind of medical or carer setting, whether you're a parent, a trained nurse, a surgeon, a funeral director, anybody who works with children who have passed away, my heart goes out to you, my thanks go out to you. You are angels that walk the earth. And I thank every single person who has been involved with Corey's care. But right now I'm struggling and I feel very lost and this is how it is no sugar coating it's the shittest thing ever right okay I just needed to get it out there I'm being honest so from Captain Corey and if you're not subbed to his channel please go and have a look there's new footage coming out of him and me, the crap goth, which is what he called me. <laughs> Sending lots of love your way. Thank you for being understanding. And I'm sorry.